you play on arguably one of the best Iowa high school teams of all time. Obviously, your team was Harrison Barnes. I think you guys went undefeated your junior and senior season. Talk about that experience a little bit, how it was to play, obviously, with such a great high school town like Harrison. And then just, you know, going undefeated for two years, not a lot of people can say that at any point in their lives. So how was that like for you? It was uh, it was crazy, man, because I was such an under the radar guy. You know, I didn't really develop till I was like a junior in high school anyway. So um, I didn't play varsity till my junior year. So um, I always give my my coach shit because, you know, they didn't go undefeated. They didn't get they didn't, they didn't give they didn't go undefeated those previous two years. And then once I joined right. varsity, I didn't lose. So it was definitely me, <laughs> and, definitely me and not Harrison. Um, but, you know, it, it was so much fun, man. We had we just some of my favorite basketball memories, just going into those small, you know, high school Iowa arenas and um, having it sold out and people wanting to take selfies with us. We're just high school kids. It was, uh, it was really cool. We were rock stars there in Iowa. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of good teams to come through the state of Iowa and to, to be, uh, to be the best. Um, it's pretty special. I think uh, just having two guys like me and Harrison, uh, don't let, don't let, the, don't like D Rock. Don't let Tucker talk you into Waukee being better than us, because <laughs> uh, uh, no, we, we arguably. Had, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you, you could you could have just said the best. You don't have to say arguably. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're the best. We're the best, and uh, that's exactly where I was going. I said arguably the best. You jumped right into it. You said you're the best. So in your mind, you're a hundred percent the best Iowa high school team ever. A hundred percent. We can line them up right now. We'll play. We'll play anywhere, anytime. Um, and it's not just Harrison. It's Mike Weber, James Kohler, Riley Stuvey, and we had a great team. A lot of a lot of good athletes, and uh, you know, there it was just such a blast, man. Such a blast. I don't think uh, I don't think we lost a game by more than I, mean, I, th I think we won every game by double digits. So it was it was pretty crazy. You mentioned that you were kind of an under the radar guy. Uh, how often did you use that as motivation to just keep working on your game and kind of elevating your status, maybe through the high school ranks? Um, it, it was huge. It was huge because, uh, you know, all these big time coaches were coming to our gym every single day, recruiting Harrison, um, my dad included. Um, so it was one of those deals <laughs> where uh, uh, you see coach K coach self pulling up in, you know, black SUVs, you know, uh, Royal Williams, Billy Donovan, um, and no one ever gave me any interest really. It was just kind of like, all right, this Harrison kid's really good. And I knew I probably wasn't a high major player at that point in my, my career, but I definitely used that as motivation, just seeing those guys kind of overlook me um, every single day they were watching us. And, um, you know, I think that really propelled me to have a good college career because I never really forgot that. I always remembered that, you know, people don't think you're good enough. Um, so I think that that just really pushed me and motivated me to, to do what I did. Yeah. Uh, where was I here? So, okay. So we're in your high school career It's coming to a close. You originally commit to you and I, and, uh, what was it about that program that really had you feel like that was the place for you at the time? Just the familiar, like just having that family atmosphere with coach Jake. Um, you know, obviously growing up with him, he was one of my dad's assistants for a really long time. And he was basically like an uncle to me. Um, you know, we go up to his lake house all the time when we were, when we were younger, really close with their family. We still are to this day. And uh, just the Sweet 16 run they went on, you know, the Farrokhman yeah. shot. Um, just Legendary those shot. Legendary um, shot. Yeah, those, those guys, those guys were my hosts and stuff. So it was really fun just to be around them. I just felt like I fit in right away. I mean, I took a couple other visits, but um, you and I just felt like the spot for me. And, uh, you know, I, I obviously am glad that what happened happened, um, but um, there's no bad blood there. I know uh, I know some people feel that way, but, um, you know, it, it was it's an unbelievable school. You, you and I is and I, I wish them the best, you know, going forward. And that's what I want to talk to you about a little bit as well. Uh, you mentioned, obviously, like how familiar things were for you. Your father had coached there. Coach Jake was still there, and he was the one that was recruiting you. All of a sudden, Coach Matt gets the CU gig, and he's like, Doug, I want you to come with me. How difficult was it for you to talk to you and I and let him know, look, I want to go uh, with my father to Creighton as opposed to, you know, holding up my end of the deal and, and being a Panther? Yeah, it was the toughest phone call in my life, to be honest. And 
I was trying to make my dad make the call. I was too scared um, to, call, to call Jake. I was way too scared. Um, I think I gave it like, I like sat there for like two hours just prepping for what I was going to say. And I'm not going to lie. I've probably told this to people before, but that night I was actually like senior week in high school. So I was at like a friend's house down the road. You know, we were through like a high school party doing what, doing what high school kids do. And my dad calls me and is like, hey, you got to get home. I'm like, no, it's not my curfew yet. I'm staying. I'm staying here. He said, no, you have to come home. Right. I'm like, what did I, like, what did I do? Did he find yeah. some, like, you know, like, so I, I went home and I could just tell right away that something was going on. And, you know, he told me the news that it, he talked with Rass, uh, Creighton's AD. And um, we kind of just decided uh, that night that we were going to do it. And then the next step, call Coach Jake. And he was actually very understanding, you know, uh, and that's why I respect him so much. Um, that's why he's still family to us. Um, you know, he, he took it really well. And I think if his sons wanted to play for him someday, you know, that's what he would do, um, as well as, you know, grant them that eligibility. And, you know, it was a really class move by him. First class move. Before we get into the start of your crane career, let's talk about this year's team a little bit. Um, obviously you're a former blue Jay, you're now a blue Jay fan. Your father's mm -hmm. still coaching there. Coach Mack, one of the greatest, uh, crane coaches in history already. And he's just, he just keeps moving. I think only Coach Allman is the only guy he needs to catch at this point. Um, so now that you're a fan, uh, how do you feel about this year's team? What have you seen from them that kind of gives you hopes for them moving forward? I just think they're so tough down the stretch. You know, I think uh, they definitely give us a little anxiety sometimes. Uh, mm -hmm. in these games. Uh, it seems like they're in control of them. And then uh, some weird stuff happens, but they're finishing them. So that's all that matters is the win. You know that. And you know how hard it is to win in this league, um, especially on the road. And I just, I really like the team, man. With Marcus and Mitch's leadership. And then um, I think my favorite player right now is Damian 100%. Jefferson. I just love the way he plays. He's kind of he's kind of a blue guy in a way, like 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 you and Grant were for us. Um, just his toughness, his energy. Um, and it just always seems like he makes the right play. And uh, you got to give the staff so much credit for developing him and how how much better he's gotten through the years and then obviously Denzel being able to shoot um, from anywhere I mean they're deep man Christian Ryan I mean Sharif the way he's pressuring um, just a fun team to watch man I think uh, it's one of the best Creighton we'll ever see and you know we got to enjoy it because uh, they're special yeah I mean you know how it is obviously Big East on the road is never easy uh, we went 16-0 at home our senior year, but we lost four games in the Big East on the road, so it's tough for sure. The two games that they struggled at against UConn on the road and Providence this past Saturday, right, was it, on the road as well. So you give up one layup on one end, and then Christian has the dunk on the other end to, to win the game. So I've, I have high hopes for this team, too. Yeah. Uh, I see him going really far. Uh, I see him finally doing what we couldn't do with our group of guys, making it past the first weekend and having a Sweet 16 Elite 8 kind of bid. Uh, well, how far do you think they will go? What's your opinion on how far they could go this year? I don't want to say it, um, but I just I think I, I think they can get there, man. I think they can. Uh, I think they can go far, man. I I, I don't want to say Sweet Sixteen or Lead Eight. Um, I don't want right. to jinx anything, um, but I just I, I this team is built for that um, because with our teams, um, you know, we just weren't the best defensively at the end of the day. Um, I think we relied on getting hot from the three point line and scoring and they're finding ways to win without scoring or shooting the ball. Well, so I think that's the sign of a really good team and a team that can go far as a team that doesn't have to rely on hitting, you know, 15, 20 threes to win the game. You know, they can, they can have some off shooting nights and they can still, you know, find a way to win down in crunch time because they're so good defensively and forcing turnovers. And um, I think that's the big difference um, between, you know, our teams and, and their teams. And the NCAA just announced that all the games are going to be in Indiana uh, through various different facilities. So, Doug McDermott, what are the odds that you sneak into those games that we're ultimately going to be a part of? I would love that, but I'm sure they're, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure they're going to make sure we're on the road during that time. Oh, yeah. Because um, right. they'll, be, they'll probably be using our facility. Um, <laughs> But uh, that would be sick, man. If we could make like a deep run and be able to sneak into Lucas Oil or Banker's Life to watch them, I would love that. But I'm not hosting any parties over here. You know, we gotta we gotta stay COVID. We gotta stay COVID free if yeah, I wanna socially you know, finish, finish the season. <laughs> I, I will say 
this, and that's one of the things that I miss about being overseas during the whole season. Like I've seen you and, and other former Blue Jays go to games and actually have that fan experience of being at Shot House Center Arena, looking down at uh, mm-hmm. watching the boys play and like actually having that fan experience. It's not something that I have a chance to experience yet, but one day, one day I'll be able to go back sure. home and, we'll, and make we'll be back. Hey, I, I, I... I haven't been back in like five or six years. So mm-hmm. someday we'll get our moment, Jay. We'll, 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 sure. uh, we'll be back. 